from Washington, this is VOA News. South Africa's Nelson Mandela, critical but stable. More U.S. shuttle diplomacy in the Middle East. I'm Ray Kugel reporting from Washington. South African anti-apartheid leader Nelson Mandela remains in critical but stable condition after showing some slight signs of improvement. President Jacob Zuma visited Mr. Mandela at the Pretoria Hospital Thursday and said he was much better than he'd seen him the previous night. President Zuma canceled a planned trip to Mozambique after checking in on Mr. Mandela, who is 94 years old. President Obama will visit South Africa today as part of his week-long visit to the continent. Mr. Obama says the U.S. wants ties with Africa based on trade and partnership instead of aid and assistance. After talks with Senegal President Macky Sall in Dakar Thursday, Mr. Obama said Africa is rising and he does not want the U.S. to miss the opportunity to broaden and deepen its relations in the region. Senegal is one of the most stable democracies in Africa and one of the strongest partners that we have in the region. Uh, it's moving in the right direction with reforms to deepen democratic institutions. And as more Africans across this continent stand up and demand governments that are accountable and serve the people, uh, I believe Senegal can be uh, a great example. Earlier, President Obama stopped on Gori Island off the coast of Senegal, where historians say thousands of African men and women in chains boarded slave ships on their way across the Atlantic. Mr. Obama called his visit to the island a very powerful moment. During his Senegal visit, President Obama also talked about the recent disclosure of the government's clandestine surveillance programs by a former intelligence contractor, saying it shows there is a pretty significant vulnerability of the secretive National Security Agency. President Obama says he has no intention of wheeling, dealing, and trading with foreign governments to secure the return of Edward Snowden to stand trial on espionage charges. Snowden is living in a transit zone at a Moscow airport while seeking asylum in Ecuador. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry met with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu in a bid to revive Israeli-Palestinian peace negotiations. The two held talks over a working dinner late Thursday in Jerusalem. Secretary Kerry will meet today in Jordan with Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas. Secretary Kerry says the leaders are both being tested politically in pursuit of a two-state peace solution. The U.S. Scott Stearns explains. Continuing his shuttle diplomacy, Kerry says Mr. Netanyahu and Mr. Abbas share a serious commitment of purpose in the face of considerable political challenges to Mideast peace. The politics of both uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu and President Abbas have both been tested, uh, as they always are in this part of the world. Kerry is making getting Israelis and Palestinians back to talks a priority. It's the fifth time in as many months that he's visited the region. Kerry says both men are skilled political veterans who believe the peace process is more important to their countries than some of their current political challenges may make it seem. Scott Stearns, VOA News, Amman. A U.S. grand jury indicted Boston Marathon bombing suspect Jokar Tsarnaev on 30 charges, including use of a weapon of mass destruction in the twin explosions near the finish line of the April 15th race. The 19-year-old was charged Thursday and, if convicted, faces the death penalty or life imprisonment. Three people were killed and more than 260 injured in the blasts, and Tsarnaev is also accused in the killing of a policeman a few days after the bombings. Older brother Tamerlan Tsarnaev died following a shootout with police. European finance chiefs have decided that when the continent's banks fail in the future, shareholders, creditors, and depositors will bear the brunt of the losses, not taxpayers. The EU finance ministers reached agreement Thursday on the new bank rescue plan, 
after sending hundreds of billions of dollars in bailouts to debt-ridden countries over the last three years. And Afghanistan still holds the title of world's largest opium producer. Sharon Bain has more. Not only is Afghanistan yet again the world's largest grower and producer of illegal opium, United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime Representative Jean-Luc Lemayeu says it also has more than one million drug users. Afghanistan itself has become a consumption country. He says the easy availability of opiates, corruption, and a population now in its third decade of war has resulted in the increased distribution and use of illegal drugs. VOA's Sharon Bain. And I'm Ray Kugel, VOA News. More at voanews.com.